In a small town, a police force and reality TV crew battled demonic possession at a horrific crime scene. As the possession spreads, they must confront their darkest fears and work together to stop the demon's reign of terror. But can they survive the supernatural forces at play in Millfield? The small town of Millfield had always been known for its peaceful nature and friendly inhabitants. Located in the heart of the Midwest, it was the kind of place where everyone knew everyone else's name, and where people left their doors unlocked at night. But beneath the surface of this seemingly idyllic community lay a dark secret that had been buried for years. It all started back in the 1950s when a series of strange and unexplained events began to occur. People reported seeing strange lights in the sky, hearing eerie noises in the woods, and even encountering mysterious creatures lurking in the shadows. At first, many dismissed these reports as nothing more than the fanciful imagination of a few paranoid individuals. But as more and more people began to come forward with their own stories, it became clear that something was amiss in Millfield. The local authorities tried to keep a lid on things, but rumors and speculation continued to spread. Some believed that the town was cursed, while others thought that there was some kind of government conspiracy at play. Whatever the truth, the people of Millfield were left feeling uneasy and on edge. Over time, the town's reputation as a hotbed of paranormal activity attracted the attention of outsiders, including a team of reality TV producers who were looking for their next big hit. They arrived in Millfield with cameras in tow, eager to document the strange happenings that had put this sleepy little town on the map. But as the producers began to delve deeper into the town's history, they soon discovered that there was more to Millfield than just ghost stories and UFO sightings. They learned about a series of unsolved murders that had taken place in the area decades earlier. The killer had never been caught, and many believed that the crimes were somehow linked to the town's dark past. As the reality TV crew prepared to film their first episode, tensions began to rise among the townspeople. Some were excited to finally have their stories heard, while others were afraid of what might happen if the truth was revealed. And as the crew began to set up their equipment, they couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched by something malevolent and unseen. Little did they know that they were about to uncover a horror that was far more terrifying than anything they could have ever imagined. A horror that had been lurking in the shadows of Melfield for decades, waiting for its chance to strike. The arrival of the reality TV crew had caused quite a stir in Melfield. For weeks, the producers had been making calls and sending emails, trying to secure filming permits and interviews with local residents. Some were excited to finally have their stories heard, while others were more hesitant about the whole thing. When the crew finally arrived in town, they were greeted with a mix of curiosity and suspicion. The locals watched as the TV vans pulled up, and the crew began unloading their equipment. The cameras and microphones were set up in the town square, and the producers began interviewing anyone who was willing to talk. At first, the interviews focused on the town's paranormal history. People told stories about sightings of strange lights in the sky, and encounters with mysterious creatures in the woods. Some even claimed to have seen ghosts or heard unexplained noises in their homes. As the day wore on, however, the interviews took a darker turn. The producers began asking about the unsolved murders that had taken place in Millfield years earlier. They wanted to know if anyone had any information that could help solve the case, or if there were any rumors or suspicions about who the killer might have been. Many of the locals were uncomfortable with this line of questioning. They didn't want to dredge up old memories or implicate anyone who might still be living in the town. But the producers were persistent, and eventually, they managed to get a few leads. As the sun began to set, the crew packed up their equipment and headed back to their hotel. They had managed to get enough footage for the first episode of their series, but they knew that there was much more work to be done. 
Over the next few days, the crew continued to film in and around Millfield. They visited local landmarks and attractions, and they interviewed more residents about their experiences with the paranormal. But as the interviews progressed, they began to notice something strange happening. People who had been willing to talk before were suddenly becoming more hesitant. Some refused to be interviewed at all, while others would only speak off the record. The crew couldn't understand what had caused this sudden change in attitude, but they knew that it wasn't a good sign. As they dug deeper into the town's history, the crew began to realize that there was a lot more going on in Millfield than they had initially thought. The unsolved murders were just the tip of the iceberg. There were rumors of corruption and cover-ups, and whispers of a dark presence that had been lurking in the shadows for decades. Despite the mounting unease, the producers were determined to continue filming. They knew that they were onto something big, and they weren't about to let a few setbacks get in their way. Little did they know that they were about to uncover a horror that was far beyond anything they had ever encountered before. A horror that threatened to consume them all. One afternoon, while filming in a remote area on the outskirts of Millfield, the reality TV crew received a tip about a potential new lead in the unsolved murder case. They were told to head to an abandoned farmhouse on the outskirts of town, where they might find some evidence that could shed new light on the case. Excited by the prospect of a breakthrough, the crew piled into their vans and made their way to the farmhouse. But as they pulled up to the property, they immediately sensed that something was off. The farmhouse was old and dilapidated, with broken windows and a sagging roof. It looked like it hadn't been lived in for years. Undeterred, the crew grabbed their cameras and made their way inside. What they found was a scene of unimaginable horror. The farmhouse was a mess, with overturned furniture, shattered glass, and bloodstains on the walls. As they moved further into the house, the crew began to realize that they had stumbled upon a crime scene. There were body parts scattered throughout the room, and a putrid smell filled the air. It was clear that whoever had been in this house had suffered a gruesome fate. The crew immediately called the police, who arrived on the scene within minutes. The small town police force, accompanied by the reality TV crew, began their investigation into the gruesome scene. But as they searched the farmhouse for clues, they began to feel as though they were being watched. There was an eerie presence in the air, and the crew couldn't shake the feeling that they were not alone. They continued their search, determined to find any clues that could help them solve the case. As they scoured the farmhouse, they found a hidden basement door, which they suspected may have been used to conceal evidence. The door was heavy, and it took several of them to pry it open. As they descended the stairs, the air grew colder and the feeling of dread intensified. In the basement, they found a room that was filled with strange symbols and markings on the walls. The symbols appeared to be some sort of ancient language, but none of the officers or crew members recognized it. As they moved further into the room, they discovered an altar in the center, with a strange object resting on it. The object was pulsating with an otherworldly energy, and they couldn't take their eyes off it. Suddenly, the object began to move, and the crew members and officers found themselves under attack by an unseen force. They felt a burning sensation in their chests and an overwhelming sense of fear. In a panic, the group rushed to leave the basement, but the door slammed shut behind them. They were trapped in the room with the pulsating object, with no way out. The reality TV crew and the police force were now faced with a terrifying reality. They were up against a malevolent force that was beyond their comprehension, and they had no idea how to defeat it. They were completely outmatched and outgunned, and it was becoming increasingly clear that they were in moral danger. As the reality TV crew and the small town police force found themselves trapped in the basement with the pulsating object, they began to feel a presence that was beyond anything they had ever experienced. The air grew thick with an eerie energy, 
and they felt as though they were being watched by something malevolent. Suddenly, one of the crew members began to convulse, their body racked with violent spasms. The officers rushed to their aid, but as they got closer, they realized that something was terribly wrong. The crew members' eyes had rolled back into their head, and they were speaking in a strange, guttural language. The officers tried to restrain them, but the crew members' strength had multiplied tenfold, and they were impossible to hold down. One of the officers realized what was happening. It's a possession, he shouted to the others. We need to get out of here, now. But the door to the basement was still locked, and they were trapped in the room with the possessed crew member and the pulsating object. As they struggled to find a way out, more crew members and officers began to convulse and speak in a strange language. It was clear that the object on the altar was responsible for the demonic possession, and the group realized that they needed to destroy it if they had any hope of escaping alive. But as they tried to approach the object, they found that they were unable to get close to it. The energy emanating from it was too intense, and it pushed them back with an invisible force. With no other options left, the group tried to perform an exorcism on the possessed crew members and officers. But the ritual only seemed to make things worse. The possessed individuals grew more violent and aggressive, and it became clear that they were under the control of a powerful demon. As the situation grew more dire, the group realized that they needed to find a way to destroy the object on the altar. But how could they destroy something that seemed to be indestructible? One of the officers remembered a legend about a powerful weapon that had been used to vanquish demons in ancient times. The weapon, a sword blessed by a holy man, was said to be capable of cutting through anything, even magical objects. The group knew that finding the sword was a long shot, but it was their only hope. They split up with the officers searching the farmhouse for any clues that might lead them to the sword, while the reality TV crew tried to hold off the possessed individuals. After an intense search, one of the officers found a hidden compartment in the wall that contained a sword. It glowed with a holy light, and he knew that it was the weapon they had been searching for. With the sword in hand, the group rushed back to the basement. The possessed individuals were now completely out of control, and it was clear that they needed to act fast. The officer with the sword stepped forward and swung it at the pulsating object on the altar. The sword sliced through the object with ease, and it shattered into a million pieces. As the object shattered, the possessed individuals fell to the ground, their bodies no longer convulsing. The demonic presence in the room dissipated and the air grew still. Exhausted but relieved, the group made their way out of the farmhouse. They knew that they had narrowly escaped a fate worse than death, and they vowed to never forget the horror they had experienced in Millfield. As the group emerged from the farmhouse, they were met by a swarm of news reporters and concerned citizens. Word had spread quickly about the horrific events that had taken place in Millfield, and the world was watching. The reality TV crew had footage of the possession and the destruction of the object, and they knew that they had a hit on their hands. The police force, on the other hand, were not as excited about the attention. They had witnessed the true horror of the situation and knew that they could never fully explain what had happened. As the officers and crew members were questioned by the press, they did their best to keep the true nature of the situation a secret. They spoke in vague terms about a dangerous situation and an object of unknown origin. But as the questions grew more pointed, they realized that they needed to get their story straight. They decided to tell a carefully crafted version of the truth, one that would protect the public from the true nature of what had happened. They claimed that they had stumbled upon a dangerous cult that was performing a ritual with a powerful object. They had been able to stop the cult and destroy the object before anyone was hurt, but it had been a close call. The public ate up the story, and the police force and reality TV crew were hailed as heroes. 
But for those who had been there, the memory of the true horror of Millfield would never fade. The officers who had been possessed struggled to come to terms with what had happened to them. They were haunted by the memory of speaking in a language they didn't understand, of feeling the demon's presence inside of them. They went to therapy and tried to move on, but the trauma of the experience would stay with them for the rest of their lives. The reality TV crew faced a different kind of aftermath. They had captured the possession and destruction of the object on camera, and they knew that they had a hit on their hands. But they also knew that they had a responsibility to tell the truth about what had happened. They met with the officers and came to a decision. They would create a documentary that would tell the true story of Millfield, one that would expose the dangers of the supernatural and the lengths that people would go to harness its power. The documentary was a hit, and it quickly went viral. People were shocked by the true nature of what had happened in Millfield and the police force and reality TV crew were praised for their bravery in the face of unimaginable horror. But even as the documentary spread, the officers and crew members knew that they could never truly explain what had happened. The true nature of the supernatural was something that could never be fully understood, and the memory of the demon that had possessed them would stay with them for the rest of their lives. In the end, the group realized that the horror they had experienced in Melfield was a reminder of the true nature of the world. There were forces out there that were beyond human understanding, and the only thing that they could do was to be vigilant and prepared for the next time the darkness came calling. As the years passed, Melfield became a footnote in the history books. The farmhouse where the possession had occurred was torn down, and a park was built in its place. The police force that had battled the demon had undergone a major overhaul, and new protocols were put in place to deal with any future supernatural threats. But for those who had been there, the memory of Melfield never faded. The officers who had been possessed remained haunted by the experience, and they often talked about it in hushed tones, only sharing their true feelings with each other. The reality TV crew went on to produce more documentaries but they never forgot about Millfield. They continued to use the story as a cautionary tale about the dangers of the supernatural, and they dedicated their careers to exposing the truth about the unknown. As for the town of Millfield itself, it struggled to move on from the events that had occurred there. Many of the residents felt that their once quiet town had been tainted by the horror that had taken place, and they were wary of any outsiders who came to visit. But despite the town's fears, Millfield became a destination for those who were interested in the supernatural. People came from all over the world to visit the site of the possession and to try and catch a glimpse of the otherworldly. Over time, the park where the farmhouse had stood became known as a haunted location, and thrill-seekers would camp out there in hopes of catching a glimpse of something paranormal. The town of Millfield eventually embraced its supernatural reputation and began hosting paranormal conventions and tours. The legacy of Millfield continued to live on in the minds of those who had been there. They knew that they had witnessed something beyond human understanding, and they could never forget the horror that they had experienced. But even as they struggled to come to terms with what had happened, they also knew that they had played a part in something important. They had faced down a demon and lived to tell the tale, and in doing so, they had helped to protect others from the dangers of the supernatural. In the end, the legacy of Millfield was one of both horror and hope. It was a reminder that there were forces out there that were beyond human comprehension, but it was also a reminder that there were people out there who were willing to stand up to those forces and protect the world from their darkness.